Welcome to the Better Automation podcast by Processio, where uh, we address one of the biggest challenges business face today, wasting time and resources on repetitive manual tasks. Our goal with this show is simple, to show you how smarter automation can free up your time, save money, and let you and your team focus on what mm. truly matters. I'm your host, Daniel, and uh, joining me today is Mihai Drzan, the founder and the CEO of Processio. Mihai, welcome. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you ha for having me and glad to be here. Great. Excellent. Um, so before we start, I have a question. Um, I think it's important for people to understand. Who is Mihai? How would you describe yourself beyond the titles, the roles? Who is Mihai at his core? At my core, um, I'm a person, first of all. Um, I'm a highly detail-oriented person. I care about a lot of things uh, in life. One of the things that I care, which is related to why I built Processio, is to have an impact in humanity in one way or the other. Um, and the way you have impact in life is to pay attention to details. And I, that's why I think it's important um, to, to have this characteristic in life. Um, otherwise, I'm a normal human being. <laughs> I work a lot. I enjoy working. Uh, some might describe me as workaholic, which I don't think I am. <laughs> um, I like to travel i like to snowboard i like to i like vacations i like to do barbecues i like uh, the countryside i like a lot of things that normal people like this is who i am and i'm a technical person uh, at heart nice at heart a technical person but i think uh, that uh, you also mm -hmm. developed the business side because now uh, you're basically by being a business owner, it's impossible not to <laughs> not to expand the technical and become also business oriented. Yeah, I, I would say I, mm -hmm. I like to learn. I'm a learner. I like to um, learn from mm -hmm. books. I like to learn from other people. Um, I like to learn from experience, uh, even though generally it's wise to learn from other people's experience, especially the bad ones. Uh, I enjoy I enjoy learning from bad experiences as well, even though that's not optimal. It, it, it is a saying. I remember this saying, uh, and uh, it says, "Normal people learn from their mistake. Smart people learn from others' mistakes." So I think this is, uh, you know, this is very smart. A very smart approach. Yeah, uh, this is very smart. That's why I don't think I'm I'm that smart. <laughs> Always, <laughs> <laughs> we surely aim to be that smart. But anyway, um, can you please tell us what is Processio and um, what what was the motivation behind? What motivated you to start Processio? Mm -hmm. So I will start uh, with the last part. What motivated mm -hmm. me to start Processio? Um, the story goes back to 2018 when uh, the power and gas business that uh, I was growing at the moment, I, I still have this business part, obviously. Uh, we were expanding to Serbia and uh, we, were, we had ERP and CRM for the power and gas industry, which is basically also automation. Um, what we encountered at that moment was the need to configure our software to fit the Serbian market as well. And the challenge that we had in, in doing so was that we had a decision to make. Do we build a team in Serbia if, and in other countries if we wanted to grow to other countries or do we expand via partners? In either way, the answer was clear that we had to have a way to configure our software to adjust it for other markets in as easy as possible versus writing code. 
So that's what we started to do, built an internal tool to do this. Um, we, then we tried to um, gain, to earn some grants in order to finance the activity of migrating uh, our existing solution at that time to this new internal tool. And that's how we learned about the low code, no code uh, industry, about automation solutions. And we learned that the problem that we had was not just our problem, was an industry-wide problem. Every software company had this problem. Every company in the enterprise world has this problem. They had this problem. They still do have this problem. They will still have this problem. So that was the motivation behind building Processio. Then from 2018, fast forward two years, then we started Processio. That was, that, that was the seed uh, that was planted in building Processio. We've done a lot of validations. We identified that this was a core problem that need, needed to be solved, it was a problem that we knew that we could solve. And that's how we started uh, on this journey from the scratch to build a commercial grade solution. Now, that was the problem. That was the inception idea that we had. And we started with a vision. Because as we were researching, we understood that the existing solutions were not able to address the needs. The market was extremely fragmented. There's a lot of uh, competition in this area, but there's still a lot of fragmentation in this market. There is no one unified solution that can um, address all the challenges that exist in the enterprise world. There are solutions that address niche use cases. There are solutions that address horizontal uh, needs. There are solutions that address verticals. There are solutions that uh, are designed for business users that are drag and drop components that you can stitch together but are not flexible if you get outside of that uh, niche use case um, and so on. So in our minds, like it begged, the market begged to have a solution that is unified that can address multiple use cases that can be used by both technical persons or by business users. And that's how we formed our vision of building Processio. And our vision towards which we are moving is that Processio should be a core business productivity tool to be used by any organizations, uh, by any organization within any countries throughout the world from technical people to business people. And we are building in that direction, uh, step by step. We're moving towards our vision. This is the source of vision that you build all, all your life towards in order to achieve it. So I wouldn't say that we have achieved that vision, but I think that's the purpose of having a vision. It should be something aspirational that it's hard to achieve and towards which you, as, as much as you move, uh, it, it's getting closer or it seems to be getting closer, but it's also moving be because uh, enterprise world is adjusting. So our vision should be as aspirational as possible. And I think this is uh, what our vision is, aspirational. And what we've done so far, it's a very powerful tool that can be used by from highly technical people to technical people like business analysts. It's not yet a tool that can be used by business persons, but we are moving towards that goal. And as we are building our technology, we're adding simplification layers on top of what we already have so that we are simplifying the experience of building automation by normal people. So what we're doing basically, we're lowering the entry bar as much as possible as we're building towards our vision. So this is mm -hmm. uh, my answer to your question. What uh, what's mm -hmm. uh, what's our vision? So um, <clears throat> it, I, I think this is super powerful because uh, I understand that you, you faced a problem. You were looking for a solution to solve your problem. You didn't find a specific solution uh, in the market to solve this problem, and you, you decided basically 
to build one. <clears throat> and now what you're doing is step by step developing this technology uh, to the point where uh, even a non-technical person would be able to uh, automate part of his business, to automate processes, to automate workflows, mm. and basically uh, to use this uh, no-code tool, no, because it's a low-code, no-code tool, Processio, and will allow um, even the non-technical users to do this automation. Yes, that's our mm -hmm. vision. We're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Like our goal is to have any technical mm -hmm. user be able to build anything. Not mm -hmm. there yet. We are at the point where if you are highly technical, you can do anything with Processio, mm -hmm. like virtually anything. Mm -hmm. As you as your uh, as you get less mm -hmm. technical as a user, you can still do stuff, but you can do uh, less stuff as you are less technical. Up to the point that if you are mm -hmm. business person, non technical whatsoever you can still do things mm -hmm. even today in Processo, like for example, configure basic workflows or configure document templates or configure um, forms and uh, user interfaces. But it, you're, it's going to be challenging for a business mm -hmm. person to actually build the logic, logic behind those processes. Like you can involve yourself as a business person to design stuff, to change, to tweak, mm. to adjust, to move stuff. But the, the, the flows mm. should be left for the moment to technical people. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very curious, <coughs> what's your view between uh, about this? Um, mm. Everybody's talking right now about no code, low code mm. or full code. Um, Everybody would like to, to, to have access to no-code tools because it's easier but to build anything you want to build with a no-code uh, tool. But what's your opinion about the full code? Uh, do you think uh, it will still, uh, developers will still continue to uh, fully customize, uh, to, to uh, do development, fully customize this full code. What, what, what's your view about this? So our, our view is that, and this is basically, mm. this can be seen from the way we've started Procession with Build Processio, and mm. we've built it with power in mind, as I said. And before answering your question, I'm going to explain what power means, and then I will go back to your question because those are related. So what does power mean for us? Power means two things. First of all, means processing speed. Like it needs to be fast in order to be powerful. Speed of processing gives you a lot of opportunities, like for example, using the technology as a backend for other systems. Currently, Processio is the fastest automation platform on earth, period. The second thing that brings power to such technology is the flexibility. So what does flexibility mean? Flexibility means that it should allow you as a builder, as a user, to actually do whatever you want. Mm. Now, we have provided out of the box actions. We call them mm. actions that you can drag and drop. You can configure those actions and you can do all sorts of stuff with this. But this will always be limiting if you don't have mm. the ability to code because there's always an edge case. There's always mm. a situation where you as a developer want to innovate. You as a developer or as a builder, want to build stuff a bit different or very differently than we have initially sought the platform to allow mm -hmm. you to build. So that's why I believe that this flexibility is core. It, it should be core to such platforms that we are building to Processio because mm -hmm. it brings the power for the user to imagine and build mm -hmm. whatever he imagines. Mm -hmm. Now, back to your question, does coding still have a future? Definitely so. I think that it will always have a future, even though the, the mm -hmm. AI is here within our lives, it's, emerging, it's, it's merging within, within our existence. Mm -hmm. 
um, within our lives, within our experiences, uh, in, in building stuff, we are using AI. Uh, builders mm-hmm. will use AI and it, it's intended to speed up development. Like you will always need to write code at some point, especially when you will have to do like really custom stuff, really special stuff, more um, um, optimized uh, optimized processes to execute faster, um, to design things in a way that we weren't that weren't initially intended or pre-built within the platform. And for that reason, I believe that coding will be especially useful for those type of more like complex projects, if you if you want. For simple mm-hmm. tasks, definitely you will not need code. For out of the box, uh, out of the box processes, for uh, flows that are standard, you will not need. Like, but if you need to customize something, like really customize, you will need to write some code. So we will, we will, con- so developers will continue to code. Uh, and this leads me to my next question. So it's obvious that um, <clears throat> we have the developers who are using Processio. Who are the, the, the people who are using Processio behind the developers? Uh, who are, who are the, the, the users and who are the people who benefits the most uh, in companies of after using Processio? Yeah, so there are the, the builders, the technical mm-hmm. users that are building the processes within Processio, but they are building uh, mm-hmm. towards something. They are building towards automating business processes. Those business processes benefit the business and are used by business people. Mm-hmm. Like you would have processes, business processes that can be fully automated and nobody has to interact with those processes. Or you could have business processes where people need to interact. And those people that need to interact with the processes Mm -hmm. that the builders built are generally business people, Mm -hmm. right? So uh, you could have, for example, a visual interface that business people would use, user interface built with Processio that has behind it has processes that were built by builders, by technical people in Processio. And those business people would benefit from those automations, from those interfaces, from those processes that were built. And the types of persons, like they can be from CEOs, CFOs, uh, department people. They can even be clients. Like we've built for uh, DHL, for example, uh, an automation that's intended for their clients. So we were contracted by DHL to actually build user interfaces to automate Mm. the process of generating um, unique codes, unique transport codes for their clients, the ones that are sending the merchandise. And basically Mm. those user interfaces added on top of each other made Mm. uh, external facing application that is used by their end clients. Mm-hmm. That's an example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm. Speaking of examples, I wanted to ask you if you can tell me uh, what are the most successful implementations you you've had so far. The uh, success stories. You you already told me one. This one about DHL. But I, I'm very curious mm. to learn more. Uh, there there are many success stories. Like I believe mm. every project that we've done and every client that we've served we see it as a success story um, because we didn't have any project that failed Um, one example is with taco fashion if you go to any taco fashion store uh, in romania and ask for an invoice they will issue that invoice with processio so the the employees in the stores are actually using a product built with Processio to issue that invoice. Uh, and we are tackling um, like situations that are highly complex to be tackled by other players. We don't go after use cases that are, are simple. We try to prove the power of our technology in like really complex scenarios. Like in this example, 
The challenge was that mm -hmm. we were not able to connect to any of their systems, yet we had mm -hmm. to build a billing platform that the front uh, store people would use to issue invoices. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. Like we, we are like finding really simple and innovative mm -hmm. uh, solutions for complex projects. And we were able to deliver this uh, the solution in one implementation month. Well, from scratch. How did you do that without having their permission to integrate with their ERPs, uh, ERP, I don't know, legacy system? How, like how we, did you we, do that? We built a process in Processio. In Processio, every process is basically an API. So we've built a process mm -hmm. in Processio. We've given them access to send calls to this API, which is a process. They started mm -hmm. sending data with products, prices, employees, and stuff like this. After we received the data, we started to map that data because we didn't knew at that point what was the data structure that we were expecting. So this is highly flexible, as you can already see right now. Then we started to model the data. We saved the data in a database. So every time they send new information that is changing in, within their system. So basically, instead of us connecting to their system, we had them send the data that was updated. And we are relying on that data to actually present the, re the, the relevant information within the front end mm. of the billing system that we've built for them. And that's how we actually managed to, to do mm. this without integration. We found the solution to be very simple, easy to implement. It was very easy for the IT department to use mm. and send us the data. They Basically, we gave them the API in five minutes. Mm. Like literally, they sent the email in five minutes. We were back with the API. They started de sending data in a few days. We got the data and we started to implement on top of that. Wow. I'm curious, uh, in terms of outcomes, what was the outcome for them? How many uh, money did they save? How, how much time? I I'm really curious. Because they had this workflow before. I mean, they, they had this problem. They... They had a lot of challenges uh, uh, solving mm -hmm. this uh, issue before working with you. And I'm just curious, what was the, the outcome for them, the final outcome? So the, the final outcome is kind of hard to estimate at this point, even looking backwards. But they had another challenge. Mm -hmm. Like this, this entire use case started from another place altogether. So the place was they had to integrate with invoice. And before uh, using Processio, their employees were issuing invoices uh, like on printed pre printed templates by writing uh, with the pen on the paper, right? So that was the challenge. How do you transition from uh, writing invoices with the pen on the paper to uh, fully automated uh, invoicing uh, billing billing platform, like so, we basically mm -hmm. removed that process. We eliminated potential errors that uh, was hap were mm -hmm. happening. We reduced the time to actually invoice uh, to the client. The client is not now not waiting uh, in front of the of the office mm -hmm. to receive the invoice. So. There's the return on investment is not just uh, um, eliminated the risk of errors. It's not just uh, removing uh, or minimizing the time to issue the invoice, but it's also mm -hmm. the uh, client feedback, the improved customer sentiment mm -hmm. uh, that we're getting from this, and also mm -hmm. removing the risk of getting fines from uh, the ANAF because of not sending the e-invoice mm -hmm. to the e-invoice portal. Mm -hmm. So there are multiple perspective here, mm -hmm. uh, pers perspectives here. Uh, I wouldn't know exactly the, the exact uh, uh, savings that were done in this scenario, mm -hmm. but I bet it no, was I worth it. No, I think it's pretty obvious. No. Yeah, it, it's, it's it, obvious uh, it was <laughs> worth it. It's pretty obvious. Um, I'm curious, can you share uh, um, other examples from other industries, uh, from other type of companies? Yeah. So we have a client in Germany. It's a utility services mm -hmm. company. 
they are receiving hundreds of emails every day, German, uh, written in German, uh, written by hands by mm -hmm. their customers with mm -hmm. meter readings for power and gas. Like before mm -hmm. using Processio, they were manually extracting this information from the emails and manually putting that information within their internal systems. Now, after automating mm -hmm. this with Processio, um, Processio, it's intercepting those emails. Mm -hmm. It's extracting the information from the body of the email. It's structuring the information and it's sending the data to their internal systems. Like before mm -hmm. working with us, they had about 20 people doing this. Now they only have mm -hmm. two or three people verifying the information that the system is not, uh, is not uh, sure uh, were extracted correctly because we also give back mm -hmm. that information with the original email and the information that was extracted and what is the mm -hmm. information that we are not sure was correctly extracted or that is missing because that's also a situation. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, from what you're saying, I understand that there are so many uh, use cases mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you can apply Processio to and just automate everything that can be automated. Every type of process, mm -hmm. every type of workflow, yeah. <clears throat> every type of repetitive task can be automated with mm -hmm. Processio. Um, I want to ask you one thing. Um, I'm not an expert in automation, and I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people who might have this question. Um, what's the difference or the connection between <coughs> Processio and an RPA tool, a robotic process automation tool? Or is it Processio and RPA tool? I think it would be very important to, to have this uh, clarified. Processio is not an RPA tool. This is uh, the first thing that uh, uh, people should know. RPA is it's a technology very useful, especially when you have to work with legacy systems, with systems that do not have APIs or direct data connection. So RPA, it's extremely well suited for those tasks. But when you need more complex workflows, when you need to orchestrate different processes that integrate between different departments and uh, need to be orchestrated, that's extremely cumbersome to use RPA. That's where you would use tools like Processio, where we act more as an IPaaS, integration platform as a service. We are, as a technology, we are at the intersection of multiple types of technologies. We are an IPaaS, so integration platform as a service. We are an ETL, extract, transform mm -hmm. loads, so basically process data and manipulate data from one format to the other. Mm -hmm. We are a BPM, business process uh, uh, modeling, so we can model the processes within Processio. We are low code, no code, and full code, right? Mm -hmm. um, RPA, on the other hand, even though it fits within the mm -hmm. low code, no code, maybe even full code uh, definition, um, even though it can integrate systems, even it mm -hmm. can connect to data sources and APIs, it's extremely mm -hmm. slow. It's uh, deployable within a virtual machine or on the local machine, which makes it extremely hard to scale and maintain. So it has some inherent uh, limitations uh, in terms of performance, uh, maintenance, mm -hmm. and scalability, mm -hmm. and also pricing. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good explanation. Thank you for clarifying this. Um, mm -hmm. I think this would be very useful for a lot of people, for myself uh, included, uh, because uh, uh, it's very easy to uh, to become confused. There are so many uh, so many uh, terms, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's very important for people to understand exactly what Processio is. So um, can you share more? Do you have other examples that you'd like to share, other uh, implementations from other industries, other companies? Yeah. Um, so what, what I would want to share right now, and I think that might be very useful for mm -hmm. people watching, um, because you also mentioned like use cases where we help remove manual work or repetitive steps. 
It doesn't have to be repetitive steps. Like it, if it's highly value added, mm. so a lot of value added to a process, even though it's not highly repetitive, like it still can bring a lot of value. And I'm going to give you one example. Mm. Uh, we are preparing to launch and we're going to launch it uh, really soon in cooperation with Vatistec, mm. another technology uh, startup here uh, in Romania. We're going to launch a use case where we have partnered in, in, in solving this. Mm. And the use case is like this. And we are using it a lot uh, within our daily flows, mm. especially on the sales side. But it can be used in any, any situation. And you will get it in a second. Um, like we are recording our conversations. Mm. After that, using Vatistec, we are transcribing those conversations. Mm. Everything is orchestrated by Processio. After that, we are using ChatGPT to summarize the conversation, but we're summarizing with a special mm -hmm. prompt. Like we can control the prompt. And mm -hmm. if it is a sales meeting, you have mm -hmm. a, dif a different prompt than if you would have a technical meeting or a general mm -hmm. meeting or a project status meeting and so on. So basically what this does mm -hmm. for us in our sales team, we are recovering two or two, mm -hmm. two to three hours a day of manual work to writing summaries, to writing project briefs, to writing follow-ups for our clients, mm -hmm. or to just summarize the discussions that we had with our prospects. So mm -hmm. this is extremely powerful. And it's not repetitive, but it reduces the, the volume of work that you would otherwise do and we're preparing to release this uh, to public for people to actually use it within their organizations within their mm -hmm. sales department within their ba department uh, doing analysis within their project management department and so on mm -hmm. and it's extremely powerful and now i'm experimenting mm -hmm. in integrating processio as a google sheets function in order to mm -hmm. access directly from google sheets different functionality that we release to the public and this this will be really cool um, mm -hmm. to have as well, and we will launch that like really mm -hmm. soon. Um, I can see the, the usefulness of this uh, this solution. I'm curious to ask you um, what what sets Processio apart from competitors. If we take this uh, last example that you gave me, uh, I know there are some other tools in the market that somehow they're able to do this transcript. For example, we have this meeting, it's a sales meeting, or I don't know, it's a meeting with the team, and we can use a tool uh, mm -hmm. from the market. Okay, there are some tools in the market that they can do this to transcribe the meeting. Uh, can you tell me what sets Processio apart? What, what, how is Processio different? Uh, from other tool, from other tools in the market, maybe not in that specific use case. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe you can. Maybe that's not the the, the biggest uh, strength that Processio has. I'm really curious to understand what's the biggest strength that Processio has, and nobody else has it. Uh, I remember in the beginning of the conversation, you told me that uh, Processio is the strongest, the most powerful automation platform on earth. Period. I'm I'm really curious to understand. More okay. about this. Okay. What so what makes Processio the, the the most powerful automation platform? I'm, sure. I'm really curious to see. Sure. Going back to this, but, but before, mm -hmm. uh, just to address the use case with the transcription, because mm -hmm. you you mentioned this. Yeah. So mm -hmm. in in this particular use case, like this is just one use case built with Processio. Processio is not doing the transcription where basically orchestrating the entire mm -hmm. flow. We're using Vatistec for the transcription and we're using ChatGPT for summarizing mm -hmm. and formatting everything. But what sets this use case apart from other tools that are doing similar things is the fact that you can control mm -hmm. the prompt, right? So think about it. Like if you're using mm -hmm. similar tools, you will get the summary directly. Can you okay. control the prompt? No, you can't. Mm. Like you would have different uh, types of discussions from different departments mm. with different types of people. You need to control that. You need to extract different mm. information. The information that you need from those discussions are quite mm. different from one discussion to the other. So you would need to actually change that a lot. right? So, so basically this, you're not having just the transcript. 
you have the transcript and also the mm -hmm. summary that fits uh, for financial team, the other one that fits the sales team, the other one for marketing and so on and so forth. Yes, and you and can control the prompt, so you can change mm -hmm. the prompt yourself. You have access to the prompt, you can edit the prompt and run mm -hmm. that prompt. Right, so it's it's extremely powerful to have access to this. Obviously, like at some point, those other tools could could use that, uh, and that's no problem. So so we we don't feel that we are competing on that particular mm -hmm. use case with with anybody. We're just mm -hmm. releasing a tool that is extremely valuable for us, so that other people mm -hmm. can benefit from that, and they can integrate it within their existing processes. Mm -hmm. really easily mm -hmm. now back to your more general question like what sets processio apart from other mm -hmm. competing uh technologies mm -hmm. i would say like if i were to re resume everything within a single word i would say versatility mm -hmm. so that that's what i would say that processio is more powerful mm -hmm. that's why it's more powerful than other technologies like think about it like we've just discussed a set of use cases that are extremely mm -hmm. different and at the same time are extremely powerful. Like imagine mm -hmm. from building a tool that transcribes, summarizes, and you can choose and edit the, that, that uh, prompt to building, mm -hmm. um, billing uh, uh, platforms or for DHL mm -hmm. to managing the entire uh, ecosystem of transportation uh, from managing uh, what clients sees, uh, managing the, the plates, the licensing registration, the, sorry, the registration plates of the vehicles that are transporting the merchandise, having everything centralized within an e-transport hub. This is how we call this project. Mm -hmm updating the GPS position for all the vehicles that are transporting the goods for DHL in real time every two minutes. Like this is extremely varied mm -hmm. and it has to be within a platform that can manage all mm -hmm. that complexity and that variation from one type of use case to the mm -hmm. other with ease, mm -hmm. a platform that can do it all. Like mm -hmm. um, you if you would go to other other uh, technologies, like really fast, you would find limitations. Either it's too slow, either you cannot code within a certain uh, scripting language, either you have edge cases where that you cannot do within within that platform, um, or you don't have certain tools, like for example UI building, or you can't build documents, uh, or whatever, like. We have designed Processio to be extremely versatile. Mm -hmm. So this for us is power. Um, hopefully I managed to answer the, so the versatility. question. versatility. Yeah. Versatility is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. I understand. I think it makes sense. Um, I, I want to add uh, on this idea uh, of versatility. I'm really curious to understand how process you make it so simple to connect with these legacy systems, even though you don't have the permission from your clients to integrate with their systems? You already told me something before, uh, but I, I think it would be very interesting to, uh, to dive deep in, in, uh, in this because I think it's super interesting. Yeah. So I, I would nuance this a bit. So first of all, we have the permission. Otherwise, without permission, you cannot mm -hmm. connect to, to anything. Like mm -hmm. there, there was the, the technical limitation that you mm -hmm. cannot connect to the systems, but they can connect to your system. So you have okay. permission to access the data. This is very important because otherwise, like if you don't have permission mm -hmm. to access the data, then like even though you would technically be able to do something about it, like you are not allowed and that's it. Like, so, Let me so. rephrase it because I'm talking about a super specific situation where, for example, many of uh, many, there are, uh, there are many corporations, many enterprises, big companies that they're not so happy to uh, let an external provider to integrate, to connect to their ERP, for example. Uh, and I know that you, you have the possibility to, to, uh, to deliver them a solution even though you yep. don't integrate with that specific ERP. Of course, you need access to the data. 
but you 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 have the possibility to get those data other ways data, other, in other ways yeah, i'm really yeah, curious yeah, to yeah, understand yeah. those other ways i think this is super super interesting yes now i understand the question <laughs> yes indeed it's like we we're working with enterprise clients all the time and indeed this is one of the biggest challenges like how do you get access mm-hmm. to the information from their systems because uh, if you were to connect mm-hmm. directly to their systems there are two challenges, which are basically a time and cost challenge, right? Those two challenges are time and cost challenge. The first challenge mm-hmm. of time is the fact that this access is given by the IT department. Mm-hmm. The IT department, like they have like thousands of projects in their backlog already. They are, uh, are, are uh, understaffed and they have mm-hmm. a lot of work to do. They cannot do it like fast. Like the the fastest uh, period of time that they would be able to actually give you access to their system if you were to mm-hmm. connect to their system would be around six months or more, regardless of the organization, mm-hmm. right? This would be the first challenge. The second challenge is that they have to allocate resources. They have to build, like allow you to access, configure the, the firewall, uh, filter your IP, be, build probably an API that is not out of the box to give you access to that particular information that you need. And that would be extremely costly. Not to mention the fact that it will take time to also build that. So if you're looking at this, integrating to a system within the enterprise world would take you anywhere from three to 12 months at least with a lot of costs. Without you as an integrator Mm -hmm. doing basically nothing, you would do nothing. You would just wait, right? So that's Mm -hmm. not efficient. And the ways we do it is like we provide alternative ways to connect to that data. And those alternative ways to Mm -hmm. are, for example, exchange data via files. Like we can connect, we can exchange data Mm -hmm. with their systems via storage, via uh, cloud storage, like Azure, AWS, Google Drive, or even SFTP. Uh, or we can exchange data via files, via email, if, it, if the other uh, ways are not possible. And we have clients where we are exchanging data via automatic emails. Their systems are sending emails to dedicated email addresses mm-hmm. that we provide for them, and Processor is monitoring those email addresses, mm-hmm. and the data can be found within the body of the email or within attached files to those emails. So there are a lot of ways to do it. Also, we can mm-hmm. provide on-premise agents that they can install within their VMs, and they can mm-hmm. access the information within the, their network, right? because other types of limitations are in terms of giving access to external parties, such as ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if that's not available, also we can install Processor within their environments, altogether within their infrastructure, having Processor reside within their network and having access to whatever they they need directly within their networks. Mm -hmm. So basically, our minds are not... I can't do it. It's always what, how can I do it easily? How can I do it faster? How can I do it with less blockers, limitations, um, less costly and so on. So this is our mindset. Always find for alternative solutions uh, that are out there, that are easily accessible by our clients, that can be easily implemented by our clients. And most of the times what we have found, like when, when we go to clients and say, Mm-hmm. Um, I can implement this project without involving you as a business person and without involving mm-hmm. or minimally involving the IT person. And I can do it like in two, three weeks. And mm-hmm. what we generally get is like bullshit. And this is, this is mm-hmm. the funny thing is that we're actually trying to achieve this effect of getting a bullshit. And then we explain, mm-hmm. okay, how do you do it? Like, where do you have this data? Do you have already a report that you can automatically run from your SAP SAP instance? Mm -hmm. They say, yes, but I don't have all the data. Like, where do you have the rest of the data? There's another Mm -hmm. report. Can you configure that report 
to run automatically. Yes, but there will be three reports, three different reports that I need to run in order to compose that information that I would need to send to you. Okay, that's fine. Can you set those reports to be stored directly on an SFTP, for example? They say yes, or if no, they, then can you send it via email automatically? If they say yes, then that's fine. If no, then we search for other solutions. Mm -hmm. We get that data regardless of the format and regardless of in how many steps they can send that data, and then we merge that data. So basically, mm -hmm. then they think, whoa, indeed, you don't need me because the only thing that you need me for is to configure those reports and add your dedicated email address. Mm -hmm. And you don't need the IT because you're not doing actually anything that requires integration or special uh, access. The IT only needs to give you access to the F SFTP or maybe nothing at all, right? So then everybody's so happy. You just need a way to, to collect the data and yeah. then you don't need them involved in the process. Yes, and everybody is happy because if, yeah, you, that's if you don't involve the IT, Funny enough, they are they are really happy not to be involved because, as I mentioned, like they have a lot on their plates. They really have a lot on their plates, and if yeah, they yeah. find like this is this project that those guys can do without me, they only have to report to them, which is fine. Like they they really need to to watch over everything. To, they need to mm -hmm. make sure that everything is fine. They need to do the security mm -hmm. screening. They need to do the architecture uh, verification and everything, which mm -hmm. is their role. And they, they do it like they, the, that part we cannot replace. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, if they are not involved in the project, then they will be extremely happy. And mm -hmm. we try to make them as happy as possible. Yes, it makes sense. Yeah, n n n n that's mm -hmm. powerful. N that's powerful. <laughs> um, so thank you for sharing this. Um, I want to ask you uh, mm -hmm. before before we finish the the meeting today. Um, I'm really curious. What are the next steps for Processio in terms of uh, product development, in terms of market expansion, uh, mm -hmm. growing the company? What are the, the future plans? Mm -hmm. This is a complex question um, with a complex answer. I'm trying to make it as simple as let's, possible. Let's use Processio <laughs> to <laughs> simplify it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So <coughs> in terms of product, obviously, we have a roadmap. Um, mm -hmm. This roadmap is fixed for the next three months, generally. But otherwise, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's quite flexible in terms of like if we find use cases that cannot uh, that cannot be 100% addressed or like we need to do workarounds in order to address those use cases then we would add a feature on the roadmap in order to uh, address that particular use case and make it as simple as possible and currently for the next 3 months like we have those types of features on our roadmap that our team is working on in order to simplify the experience mm -hmm. of building to add new capabilities so that we can easily and faster address use cases mm -hmm. so basically uh, you're adding features you're adding capabilities uh based on the feedback that you get from your clients based on the market mm -hmm. needs you're you're not exactly. just building something for the sake of building it when people come to you, I need I need Processio to solve me this specific use case. Can you do that? That's when you add those specific new capabilities and features. Exactly. And there's there's another aspect that we're looking at, like how scalable is that use case? Because obviously there are like millions of potential use cases that we would be able to address for that might might we need mm -hmm. to adjust the platform to simplify those use cases, but we cannot address them mm -hmm. simultaneously. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to prioritize and we prioritize based on the potential impact of that use case um, for our clients, mm -hmm. for our potential business development and the value that it brings mm -hmm. to the ecosystem, to our users, right? To, and to our partners. 
And now to our partners, this is the part where I answer you about the, the future business developments that we have in plan. We are developing a network of partners. There are three types of partnerships that we have in mind. The first type is implementation partnership. And this is very uh, particular. And I'm going to go back to this. We have mm-hmm. technology resellers, which are basically companies that are reselling similar solutions to their existing clients. And we have a more powerful technology than what they are mm-hmm. currently uh, selling and with more affordable uh, pricing so that they mm-hmm. can actually sell more to their existing clients. Because one of the limitations that we have found from those types of companies is that they are not closing enough mm-hmm. deals because their existing solutions that they have within their portfolio are way too expensive. And the pricing is scaling way too high uh, for their clients. So they are not closing enough deals. So we are offering more affordable pricing Mm -hmm. with more capabilities within Mm -hmm. Procession. And the third type of partners Mm -hmm. are uh, technology alliances, like the one that I mentioned with Vatistech. So basically, we're searching for uh, technologies for um, companies that mm-hmm. have complementary services or complementary technologies to what Can we offer. Can you share offer. some examples here? What type of companies, what type of technologies or services I think would be useful? Yeah, so the types of companies business. that we are looking for are uh, techno- companies mm-hmm. that are building technologies for tech people. That's one, mm-hmm. right? Like Zvatistec. Mm-hmm. Vatistec is a company that's offering services for technology people to integrate their their APIs to transcribe um, audio from Mm -hmm. from files. Other types of uh, technologies might be developer-centric technologies that are intended for developers to enhance their experience, to give them some tools in order to process something. Other types of technologies might be for business users, but they would need to enhance their capabilities with integration, mm-hmm. with extending their capabilities via automation and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And services, potential services company might be um, companies mm-hmm. that are providing services to, um, I don't know, like, for example, mm-hmm. uh, lead gen. Why not? Mm-hmm. Right? We can enhance their experience and address uh, common common uh, clients. Mm-hmm. So and going a lot of a lot of potential use cases here, also. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So basically, what we're trying mm-hmm. to do with partners is in is support each other. We mm-hmm. support them; they support us. So basically, that's that's the synergy here. And I would I would like to go back a bit to the implementation partners because, mm-hmm. as I mentioned, they are uh, more special for us. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, we are generating opportunities for the implementation partners. We are genera- mm-hmm. we are talking directly with the end customers, and the deals that we are closing, we are forwarding mm-hmm. those deals to the implementation partners, so they implement on top of our technology. Mm-hmm. The second thing that we are doing is for special partners. So basically partners. you bring them clients. What you're saying yes. is that you bring them clients. They need to take care of these clients and just implement your process you to the clients that you bring Yeah, we, we generate business for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the second thing that we're doing, and we're doing this for partners that are already know mm-hmm. Processio, already have used Processio within projects, they have use cases that they have built or they have identified for their clients mm-hmm. or prospects and they want to run campaigns with us or basically mm-hmm. we run campaigns for them so we're generating we're acting like a internal lead agency for them and we are running mm-hmm. outbound email campaigns on their behalf to generate opportunities mm-hmm. for the use cases and for the ICPs that they have. Because what we found is that a lot of implementation partners have mm-hmm. development capability, they can deliver projects, but their mm-hmm. issue is in generating more demand on the business side. 
And that's why, first of all, that's why they are interested in working with us because we are generating opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make them more scalable and generate even more opportunities mm -hmm. for their use cases where they are experts at that mm -hmm. particular use case. That's why we are running lead generation uh, campaigns mm -hmm. on their behalf at no cost with our internal lead generation, mm -hmm. uh, basically agency. It's a, it's a department that we're building in that direction. Now that's super interesting. That's super interesting. Uh, um, I, I can't wait to see how this uh, evolves, but uh, uh, I think that's a, that's a great opportunity for uh, for this implementation partners to uh, to work with process you on this. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, we are getting uh, close to end uh, this first meeting. So um, I think it would be very useful to to tell the community that we're planning to have this. Uh, monthly uh, interviews, monthly podcasts with you and with uh, Marianne, your co-founder, the co-founder of Processio, uh, because the, the, the goal of this uh, podcast episodes is to provide as much value as possible for the community. And uh, this is just the, the beginning, uh, but uh, we, will, we will have a, a lot, uh, we plan to, to come with a lot of uh, interesting and um, uh, very important subjects uh, on this automation uh, mm -hmm. uh, about automation and offer a clear, exact solution for people to solve to solve their needs. Uh, and uh, because we are talking about uh, solving the needs uh, right now, um, we all know in Romania there is this system e invoice e factura e invoice in Romania and. I know that uh, you had a lot of uh, uh, success stories here, a lot of implementations with companies that needed a robust uh, automation solution for the e-invoice in Romania. Uh, and we all know that uh, the e-invoice uh, system is going to be implemented across Europe. I'm really curious, uh, how do you plan? How, how, how is Processio preparing uh, for this uh, implementation at the European level, do you plan to uh, to uh, to have a campaign to run a campaign to go to as many companies as possible to implement your solution? What, what are the plans? Yeah, so the plan is in, indeed. First of all, indeed, there's a invoice mm -hmm. European wide regulation that requires all Euro European countries to onboard within the system. The implementation is done by each of the countries individually, but they will be uh, obeying to the format mm -hmm. and structure of the messaging. Um, and there's a plan to actually implement this in within each of the countries. Like mm -hmm. every year, there are new countries that are, are onboarding within this new system. For example, mm -hmm. next year in 2025, uh, the German speaking language, the German speaking countries are uh, required to actually start this process. The way we are going to do this is via implementation partners, and we're going to run lead generation campaigns on their behalf for the e invoice opportunity, giving them the solution that we already have implemented within Romania and helping them implement the solution for each of the country because. Even though the backbone will be the same, there will be differences between from country to country, uh, mm -hmm. from translate translating the the, mm -hmm. uh, the structure and so on. So there there will be some adjustments that need to be done, but mm -hmm. they can be done like extremely fast. And we are looking for implementation partners for each of those countries that are going to uh, on board on the e invoice. And we're going to support them in lead generation and in providing them with the solution mm -hmm. and helping them with the first implementations. Mm -hmm. That sounds very good. Um, I think uh, I think we are uh, mm -hmm. close to the end. Uh, before we finish the, the meeting, I want to thank you for mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for your time and for. Uh, offering uh, so much value for the community. Uh, 
Uh, and as I said, this is our goal with this show to provide as much value as possible for uh, for the community. And before we end, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, thank you, our, Daniel. Our next uh, meeting next month. Yeah, thank you, Daniel, mm -hmm. for being such a wonderful host and uh, asking the the right questions. Mm -hmm. Very good questions. Thank you for for them. Um, I want to thank our users, uh, more than 6,000 uh, users worldwide that are using our technology on a daily basis. And I'm like really grateful for having all those users use our technology and benefit from using our technology. I would uh, really enjoy having them be like share with us the use cases that they are building. Maybe we mm -hmm. can help them some way, either uh, help them generate more opportunities or market those use cases together with them so they can mm -hmm. become more uh, visible through their clients or visible mm -hmm. through our client's base so that that might help them. So if they, if anybody finds uh, like value in this, please feel free to share or reach out to us to figure something out. We have uh, within, within our team, we have Alejo Rose, which is our uh, partnership manager, or you, so you can reach out directly to him. Um, mm -hmm. I think that would be extremely beneficial both for the community and for those users mm -hmm. that are building the use cases. Um, other thing is thank you to our existing clients, which are like have been extremely open mm -hmm. with us, and we have implemented uh, more than 100 projects mm -hmm. this year, uh, which is really cool to to think about. Like every three days, uh, three calendar days uh, from this year, we mm -hmm. implemented uh, one project, which is like nice. How cool is that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Amazing. And, yeah, and and I want to thank all our partners that are um, offering all their help. They are involving mm -hmm. themselves in delivering projects, in giving us feedback, in helping us improve mm -hmm. what we are building he building here, and basically helping us improve uh, everything that we're trying to achieve, and helping us move uh, faster and mm -hmm. further. And. Thank you also, Daniel, for being here by our side mm -hmm. and uh, um, helping with like uh, bringing our message to the world. Yeah, man, it's my pleasure. You're doing uh, amazing things. I'm, I'm so happy and grateful to have the chance to work with you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, I'm and one more excited. thank you. One more thank you, Daniel. Yes, thank you. Please. Thank you to our team because they are the invisible mm -hmm. backbone through through it all. Like without them, like we wouldn't have this technology. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have those uh, projects. We wouldn't have those clients. We wouldn't have those yeah. uh, users. Like they are the core. They are the ones that are doing the heavy mm -hmm. lifting. Like. We're just talking here, <laughs> but they are working. Yes. How many people in the team right now? On the Processio team, we have close to 20 people. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for this. One more question and we can finish. Uh, what's the best way for people to reach you and Alejo mm -hmm. and the team if they have uh, proposals for you, if they are interested in the, in the partnership with you, where they can find you? They can find us on LinkedIn or mm -hmm. on our Processio Discord channel. You can find the Discord channel on our website, processio.com. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. where you find us. We will always be there replying to your messages. Amazing. Thank you so much. Awesome. A pleasure to, to have this discussion. Mm -hmm. See you on the next one, next month. Thank you. Excellent. Looking forward. Mm -hmm. Bye.